Hey guys, Script here with another video, and I wanted to discuss this because this is actually something that I've been saying for a really long time, and so this article kind of inspired this as well. Star Wars fan explains why starting with The Phantom Menace is a bad idea. Now, I have my own reasons why, and we'll see if they coincide with what this fan also thinks. So, some Star Wars fans see The Phantom Menace as the perfect starting point, first-time viewers of the iconic franchise. One fan has a major issue with this order and has laid out his argument against the divisive prequel film. Uh, since the prequel trilogy released in the early 2000s, the fandom has been split about which watch order was correct. An argument reignited the Disney Star Wars sequels and streaming projects, bringing in even more new viewers. The main point of contention revolves around The Phantom Menace, the first prequel film that many fans consider the most ambitious Star Wars movie. Now, I don't, I wouldn't use the term correct. People can do what they want. I would use the term the best, the better. Um, that would be what I say because ultimately there are people that have seen them in both orders and swear by the fact that it's better to start with, with one, two, three, and then go four, five, six. So I would just say for me, this is I would start with four, but let's just see what this guy says. Well, Star Wars fans defended the prequels first watch order. Uh, Star Wars Reddit board of the discussion is far from settled, and one dissenter has come back with an argument against starting new fans off with The Phantom Menace. While user Palace Pistachio specifies that they are by no means a prequel hater, they assert that the prequel first, that is, chronological watch order, is not the ideal one for one simple reason. The Phantom Menace is not the introduction to the franchise that new fans deserve. I would 100% agree with that. I have been to multiple watch parties in the past few years to, to start the Star Wars saga, only to see that the host queue up the Phantom Menace. This plays out the same every time. Those who have watched the episode, uh, excuse me, those who have watched episode one will make jokes and the first timers will be bored. First time watchers get more entertainment value out of the jokes being told about the movie than the movie itself. The user doubled down on their assessment, highlighting why starting with A New Hope is better. Now I want I want to say George Lucas has said in, in, in at least one interview that I know of that you should start with episode one, but he's also the creator. So he maybe doesn't see it from a fan's perspective either. And I would agree with this person i mean starting with episode one i don't know man and like unless you're like a little kid you and even a little kid like with all the political stuff in there it might be kind of boring yes there, there there will be scenes that will be exciting like the the duel with garth maul and and the pod racing and some stuff like that but i think overall it, it pales in comparison to starting with episode four i don't even think it's close uh, while the user acknowledged the additions of the Star Wars franchise's animated shows made to the canon surrounding the prequel era, they insist that the shows only work with proper context, and the equivalent context needed for the prequels is the original trilogy. Okay, I would agree with that. Additionally, Pales Pistachio also opposes the chron chronological order because it takes away some of the enjoyment fans would have otherwise get from watching the release order that starts with A New Hope, the first of the original trilogy, and a Star Wars story that execs were excited about a year before release. Anakin Falling Prey to the Dark Side is not a surprise in the prequels. It's what they're all about. It is not worth ruining the twist that Dark, Darth Vader is Luke's father because the prequels are clearly written for an audience fully aware of who Darth Vader is. Exactly. Who is this guy? I like this guy. This guy knows what he's talking about. Pistachio. Get a hold of me. You're right. You're 100% correct. There are people that literally don't know that. There's enough time has passed where like, you see people like on YouTube and stuff, reaction videos and stuff, that don't know that. And if you watch the prequels first that just totally ruins when it's revealed that vader is luke's father you you have to start with episode four you have to in my opinion while there are no points to be made where there are points to be made excuse me both ways most have been argued to death the part of this argument that highlights the sanctity of darth vader's identity and the eventual reveal is strong it sure is darth vader is an integral part of the star wars franchise being amongst the favorite parts of the movies for many fans and serving as the biggest draw of the prequels additionally darth vader's aura in the franchise masterpiece that disney is missing due to a sheer difficulty of replicating it so it can can't be understated when deciding on a watch order. Counter to this point is that the sheer popularity of the Star Wars franchise has made it almost impossible not to know who Vader is, assuming his infamously on-the-nose Sith name wasn't enough of a dead giveaway. While the magic of, magic of experience the reveal is worth preserving, the cat mar might be irreparably out of the bag. Not necessarily. Not for everybody. And, st and even still, even if you kind of know that, seeing that scene and seeing Luke's face and seeing that before you see him turn is still better because you still are in the dark about how that turn happened, what he looked like without the suit or whatever. Maybe you would know that, but like what he was doing and what kind of a Jedi he was. I just think it makes way more sense. And they were released that way. That was the way all of us that grew up on them experienced them. So it just makes sense for you to continue that. I mean, this is a, it's not broke, don't fix it. So it wasn't broke. It was a good way of, of, of viewing them. So don't change that. Why would you change that? And as far as like Disney not being able to replicate like the, the Darth Vader sort of scenes and replicating that whole thing i would just say you know 
I tried my best to do that in my prequels, uh, or sorry, sequels reimagined. And I'd love to hear people's opinions if people would, would feel like watching that because I do have kind of that moment. It's a really huge moment. It's not Vader, obviously, it's somebody else, but there is something sort of very similar to that that takes place. In the end, the more compelling point is that The Phantom Menace was the most confusing plot in Star Wars and benefits to some pre existing love of the franchise to see viewers through some of the rougher patches of the prequel trilogy overall. However, fans choose to introduce the franchise. It seems set to continue enthralling new viewers for decades. I wouldn't say it's confusing. It's just, it's just not as good. It's not, it's not as fun of a movie either. Like you look at episode four, like it's just fun. There's the banter, the humor, you know, the chemistry between Leia and Han is phenomenal. And then of course you throw Luke in there and even Han just has chemistry with everybody. Han Solo really is in a lot of ways, the glue of the original trilogy and the decisions he makes and how he saves people at the end. And he, and, he, and he has such an arc in terms of changing his attitudes and going from the smuggler to this this good guy, this general that really cares about everybody. He's really the glue. And and if you're going to say that, if they're going to say that Disney's missing sort of that Darth Vader moment, I would actually argue more than that. They're missing that glue character, that, that Han Solo type character. It doesn't have to be like Han Solo, but just a character that sort of glues everything together, but isn't necessarily a Jedi or like some special thing. If anything, that's what Disney Star Wars is missing and if and i would i would argue that that it's missing from all of their shows everything they just don't have a character like that they just don't they tried to do it with poe but poe was too similar in a lot of ways and then and then they threw in that he was a spice runner like really so then he's basically just a smuggler too so it's kind of like they 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 just they didn't they didn't create anything new they just sort of created a a a copy but not quite as good of a copy although i do poe dameron is one of the i do like him as a character but but that's that's basically it i agree totally start with four start your friends off with four it's the best way to start you get that you get that impact you get that fun you get the humor you don't get the whole political end the the politics in a new hope are shorter scenes they involve the imperial sitting around and, and, and talking in a conference room for the most part and or and or the emperor having discussions but they're not these long drawn out scenes like you get in the prequels and i think seeing those scenes would get you more hyped up and then when you do see the prequels it's like okay it's kind of corny you got this little kid I, i'm not a huge fan but that's darth vader wow that's darth vader when he's a kid blah blah, blah. so it kind of makes it better that's my opinion and that's where i agree with this article that the the original trilogy if you watch it first and then you go back and watch the prequels the original trilogy kind of informs the prequels so that you're you're if you started off with young anakin and all that stuff you might not be that excited about it but if you have the information that you get from the original trilogy it kind of makes the phantom menace a better movie than it would be like i would just argue this my last point if the phantom menace had come out first I don't think Star Wars ever would have made it as big as it did. I just don't. I think, you know, it still would have been a hugely popular movie because of the special effects and stuff. And it, it, even in the 70s, if they had done it, it still would have had crazy special effects. It was ILM. It was groundbreaking, all that stuff. But the story would not have had nearly the impact. And I don't think Star Wars would be what it is today if they had started off with Episode One. And that being the case, I would argue you should always start your friends off with episode four or yourself if you haven't seen it with episode four let me know in the comments section what you think did you start off with one how, how did that make you sort of see the rest of the saga if you started off with four let me know how your feelings on that or if you flip-flopped and think maybe starting off with one is better either way let me know in the comment section as usual guys thanks for watching if you do like this content please like subscribe and feel free to check out anything else on my channel and have yourselves a really good day